Direct and inverse proportionality sounds like a really hard title for a topic, but this video is here to show you that it's really not that bad. What would a question look like on the GRE or GMAT, for example? As you can see, it would say something like, A is directly proportional to B. If A is 10 when B is 4, what is A when B is 12? I'm here to tell you the secret about proportionality. And there are two different types of proportionality, directly proportional and inversely proportional. Let's talk about directly proportional first. That's any situation where one thing goes up, the more another thing goes up. For example, you might say the number of hours of revision a student does is directly proportional to their exam score. As the hours go up, the exam score goes up. Or how about my own example? As the number of hours of watching my channel go up, their exam score goes up too. But how would we write this mathematically? The secret is in the letter K. We write down the equation, not A equals B, they don't equal each other. It's A equals K times B. K is what we call the constant of proportionality, but you don't need to know that title. What you need to know is that you need to write down an equation with a K next to the letter that it says directly proportional to. So just in order, basically. A is A equals directly proportional to K times B. A equals K times B. Now, you might wonder, what is the purpose of this K? You can almost think of it like a slope, a gradient. As one thing goes up, how quickly does the other thing go up? Is it that for every one hour of revision, my exam score goes up by three or by five or by half? That's the K. K is like the slope. And how do we calculate it? Well, in proportionality questions on the GRE and GMAT, they will always give you two numbers initially to help you work out the K. I should put a caveat there. They will almost always give you those two numbers for the simpler questions. The final question is gonna be an absolutely epic and difficult one where we don't even work out K. But for now, you almost always get a value for each of the letters to enable you to work out K. Let's see how that works. Well, if we have this equation and we know A is 10 when B is four, we can insert those numbers in. A is 10, we replace the A with 10, B is four. Now, we could simply divide both sides by four because 10 equals 4k, or k times 4. Divide by 4, k is 2.5. And again, k is for life, not just for Christmas, as I've written down below. Once you've worked out k, that is permanently in the equation. It is the constant in the equation. So we can rewrite the equation as a equals 2.5b. That 2.5 isn't just for the first example or the first equation, it's permanent now. Once you've worked it out, it won't change. So that's our permanent new equation, A equals 2.5B. Finally, the question will almost always then give you a value for one of the letters and ask you to work out using your new equation what the other value is. Here they've said B is 12, so we can simply insert that into our equation, replacing the B with 12. Notice the 2.5 stays the same because we've worked out K. 2.5 times 12 is 30, so A is 30. We're gonna see this concept come up again in the next question where we work out K and then keep it forever. But I wanna push you to the next level, which is inverse proportionality. That sounds scary again, but it's really not. Inverse proportionality or something being inversely proportional is the exact same, except instead of K times the other letter, it's K divided by the other letter. Imagine this time, instead of talking about the number of hours watching my channel, or revising before your exam? What about if it's the number of beers you drink before your exam? That would be inversely proportional. The more the number of beers go up, the more your exam score will likely go down. So how do we reflect that mathematically? Well, with a divide instead of a times. So in this case, when it says P is inversely proportional to Q, it's P equals K divided by Q, not K times Q. Yes, you can't avoid that K. The K will always be there in proportionality questions. And yes, to your follow-up question, we are gonna to have to work out as we did before. 
So notice P equals K divided by Q. Exact same as the previous example, except inversely proportional is K divided by, directly proportional is K times by. And as I said, it makes sense, right? Because if Q increases, like the number of beers increase, the fraction gets smaller because Q is now in the denominator. And so P gets smaller. Anyway, our mission as before is to work out the K. Again, they've given us two numbers. If P equals eight when Q equals four, what is P when Q equals 16? So we use the first two numbers, the pair of P equals eight and Q equals four to work out K. Replace them in the equation and you get eight equals K over four. Multiply both sides by four and you get 32 equals K. Now I've rewritten that just for emphasis. K is for life, not just for Christmas. It is permanently 32 now. So don't keep the equation P equals K over Q. Rewrite the equation. This is probably the step that most students forget about. They think they've worked out K, job done. No, you've got to rewrite the equation with our value of K permanently written as 32 now. P equals 32 over Q. Finally, we have one of the values now, which is Q being 16. So we replace the Q with 16, keeping that 32. 32 divided by 16 is two, so P is two. Exact same process as the previous question, basically, except it was inversely proportional. So we did K divided by Q rather than K times B in the previous question. But I think 90 plus percent of you will have got that by now and we're thinking, oh, well, is there anything more difficult than this? Is this just done now, proportionality? Yes, I'm gonna give you a final, very difficult question and don't be worried if you can't get it, it is really hard. And I just threw it in there just to demonstrate how we don't always have to calculate K to get a proportionality question right. We usually do, but not always. As ever, try it yourself, or you can wait to see my explanation. The question is this. The surface area of a spill, S, is directly proportional to the time since the spill occurred, T, and is inversely proportional to the square, oh, that's different, of the viscosity of the liquid spill, the V. Don't be intimidated though, it's very similar. If the time since a spill occurred is tripled, and the viscosity of the liquid spilled is halved, by what percentage is the surface area of the spill increased? Sounds crazy, right? It really isn't that bad. Notice the first part of the sentence. The surface area of a spill, S, is, equals, directly proportional to the time since the spill occurred. So we already know how to write that, right? S equals K times T. Directly proportional, it's K times T. But at the same time, it's inversely proportional to the square of the viscosity. So inversely proportional means we're gonna have a divide, we're gonna have a fraction. So the top line is K times T, but inversely proportional in that denominator, it's not just viscosity V, it's the square of the viscosity. So it's V squared. So we've created one equation with two different elements. We only needed one K just to represent the constant of proportionality, despite there being two proportional situations. We only need one K and the directly proportional element was covered by the numerator, just times T. And the inversely proportional element was covered by the denominator, divide by V. But instead of being V, it said the square of the viscosity, which basically means V squared. So one equation there encapsulating all the information. Problem though, they haven't given us a load of numbers which we can use to solve and find K. That's because we don't even need to find K. The question isn't asking us for a specific amount for the surface area. It's just asking how would it change if these other variables changed? Now, for those students who attempted this by picking numbers, well done, that could definitely work. And that's definitely one way of doing that. I'm not gonna cover that in this video even though it will work if you pick numbers and then work out K and then pick some new numbers. But I'm saying that there is a quicker way of doing it if we use algebra. So see if you like this quicker way. Notice it said in the final sentence, if the time since the spill occurred is tripled. So I'm just gonna replace the T with three T because the time has tripled. Then it says the viscosity of the liquid spill is halved. So I'm gonna replace V with a half V, okay? And if I do those two things, 
the equation should take care of itself. Don't forget to keep brackets though. So I've replaced the t with a 3t, notice, and I've replaced the v with a half v, but I've kept the brackets, they're important, because it's the entire viscosity, half v, which is being squared. Now, I just need to do some nifty maths. The 3t is easy, it's basically just 3t, but what is a half squared? A half squared is a quarter. So a half v squared is a quarter v squared. So we have the next step in the calculation. Finally though, we have this three on the numerator and a quarter in the denominator. What happens when you divide by a quarter? Dividing by a quarter is the same as multiplying by four over one or multiplying by four. So the top line will become three times four, which is 12. Notice I haven't worked out K. I've just worked out that the fraction originally was kt over v squared, but now is 12kt over v squared. In other words, that entire fraction has gotten 12 times bigger. So the surface area has gotten 12 times bigger. Does that mean that it's increased by 1200%? No, if this is confusing, check out my percentage videos. But if something gets 12 times bigger, it is an 1100% increase. Just like if something gets two times bigger, it's a 100% increase. Or three times bigger, it's a 200% increase. 12 times bigger, it's an 1100% increase. So D is the correct answer here. But most importantly, I hope that you now feel somewhat confident and ambitious about directly proportional questions and inversely proportional questions. Because it's one of those topics where once you know it, it really isn't that bad. But if you don't know the trick, they can seem really intimidating. Have a great day.